So we already learned the basic principle of the MOS plus spectroscopy and there we found that the gamma ray emitted by uh, a nucleus may not be absorbed by another nucleus because the source nucleus and the, the receiver nucleus may have different chemical environments, right? So it may not be absorbed. So, so the, the, uh, this effect actually referred to as a chemical shift in MOS pass spectroscopy. So what is essentially a chemical shift in MOS pass spectroscopy? It is not like in the case of the enema. Here, the, uh, uh, the gamma ray emitted by a source nucleus may not be absorbed by the receiver nucleus. This is because of the difference in the chemical environment of the source nucleus and the uh, receiving nucleus. Okay, And this effect is referred to as a chemical shift in photoscopy. And sometimes it is also called a isomer shift. And uh, if uh, we are observing the most part spectrum of uh, FECN6 times FECN6 times 4 minus, okay, if you are uh, observing the most part spectrum of this uh, ferrocyanide uh, ion, and then um, we can see that a single sharp absorption peak occurs at a velocity of about minus half millimeter per second okay so it will be like this if we are plotting the mass pass spectrum here in this axis we will plot millimeter per second millimeter per second and uh, here it is uh, zero okay and the uh, plus velocities are you are plotting in uh, right to zero so this is one two three four five etc so this is plus pi uh, millimeter per second okay millimeter per second so actually it is not needed to write again millimeter per second because i already have said that the scale is in millimeters per second okay so this is plus pi and uh, if you are considering the points left to zero one two three four five this is minus five millimeter per second okay so in the in this axis we are taking the velocity okay velocity of the source and also in this uh, axis we can take the uh, counts per second in this axis counts per second so counts per second okay so this uh, value is obtained from the giga counter and uh, if you are observing the the most part spectrum of this uh, ferrocyanide ion then we will see that the 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 peak will come at around minus half millimeter per second minus half millimeter per second it is somewhere here right so you will get a peak around here it will be like this minus half a millimeter per second so you are not getting the peak at zero. Actually, if you are using the metallic ion uh, as a um, sample, then you would get a peak here at the zero because um, the metallic ion and the ion in the source will have the same chemical environment, and therefore you can expect that there will be no uh, uh, the, the 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 sample does not have to move or it, it will both of them will have the excited state and ground state with the same energy levels so it will be moving it will be absorbing at a zero millimeter per second itself but since uh, the iron in this nuclear in this compound is in a different chemical environment it will be uh, appearing at a, a different uh, position uh, here in this case it is minus half a millimeter per second okay so here it denotes the velocity plus half and minus half actually denotes the direction of the velocity of the source if it is towards the sample we can call this as a positive velocity and if it is away from the sample then that is if the source is moving away from the sample then we can call this as the negative velocity okay 
So I just wanted to say that depending on, depending upon the different chemical environments, the samples may be appearing at a different uh, uh, chemical shift positions. So now you understood what is meant by chemical shift in the MOSFET spectroscopy. And this chemical shift actually depends on several factors. The main factor affecting uh, the chemical shift is the uh, is electron density at the nucleus. Okay, electron density at the nucleus. Electron density at the nucleus. One factor. Electron density at the nucleus. Electron density at the sample nucleus. The nucleus here means the sample nucleus. Okay. And uh, we know that the electrons are residing in orbitals. Okay. There are many orbitals like S, P, D, F. Okay. And uh, uh, since electrons are residing in the orbital, we have to check how much each orbital is penetrating into the nucleus. And we can neglect the electron density at the nucleus due to these orbitals, means P, D and F. Any considerable electron density at the nucleus will be contributed by the S orbital only. Therefore, whenever we talk about the electron density at the nucleus, we can only think about the S orbitals, okay, or the electrons residing in the S orbitals. An example we can see here, I am giving the value of uh, some of the tin uh, nuclei, the chemical shift to positions. Okay. For example, the valence state here is uh, SN4 plus, and uh, as the observed the chemical shift was uh, zero, and when it is a uh, four covalent tin, okay, tin four covalent means it makes four covalent bonds. Then uh, its uh, chemical shift was position was observed at 2.1 millimeter per second okay this or these are millimeter per second millimeter per second and when it is uh, sn2 plus sn2 plus then the observed chemical shift was on 3.7 3.7 millimeter per second and uh, here the the most part nucleus that we are considering is a tin 119 okay that is the most part nucleus and uh, if we are observing these chemical shifts, we can see though that from SN4 plus to SN, it is increasing to 2.1 and from there to SN2 plus, it is increasing to 3.7 millimeter second. The, the, the factor behind this is now obvious from the electronic configuration of the tin in these samples. Tin will have the configuration. 5 s2 p2 right it has four valence electrons and in the case of sn4 plus all these valence electrons are kicked out and therefore in the case of the sn4 plus the electronic configuration will be 5s0 and 5p0 okay all the four electrons are kicked out and in the case of uh, sn4 covalent tetra covalent tin and in that case it will be sp3 hybridized means all the s and p orbitals in the um, fifth shell is hybridized so it is 5 sp3 and in this case all the sp3 orbitals how many sp3 orbitals are four orbitals are there all the four sp3 orbitals will be singly occupied okay it will be like this 3p orbitals and one s orbital all in the 5 this is 5s this is your 5p and uh, the, for the for, for hybridization and uh, all the orbitals will be singly occupied and then it will undergo hybridization to give a 5 sp3 hybridization so all the sp3 hybrid orbitals are occupied by only uh, one electron therefore if you are counting the s electron density in this case s electron density it's only one okay actually the contribution of s towards this is 25 percentage after four 
orbitals taking part in the hybridization only one s orbital is there so 25 percent is s contribution and there are four electrons together for all the sp3 hybridized orbitals the 25 percentage of four is one therefore the s electrons in this case is only equal to one so in this case s electron the first case uh, in, the, in the first case x electron s electron is equal to zero in the second case s electron is equal to one and if you are considering the sn2 plus and in the case of sn2 plus the electronic configuration is 5 s2 5 p 0 okay so in this case how many s electrons are there two s electrons are there so from here to here the s electrons are increasing from 0 1 2 like that 0 1 2 like that so the the the, the corresponding shift we can see in the MOSFAR chemical shift here also 0 2.1 3.7 etc so it is very clear from this data that actually the s electron density of the nucleus is directly have uh, is directly having an influence on the chemical shift of the MOSFAR nuclei okay and the second factor which is affecting the the, the chemical shift is uh, it is the, the um, it affects it is the radius radius of the excited state and the ground state okay this ground state nucleus and the excited state nuclei will have a different uh, radius okay for example if you are considering the, that is the radius of the radius of excited and ground nuclei for example, if you are considering the iron 20, iron, uh, 29, iron 29, iron 129, iron 129 nucleus, this is a MOSFAR uh, isotope, means it can give the MOSFAR spectroscopy spectrum. And um, in this case, the excited nucleus is larger than the ground nucleus. So in this case, excited nucleus is larger than the ground state nucleus. But if you are considering the ion-127, ion-127, and in this case, in the case of ion-27, the ground state nucleus is larger than ground state nucleus, is larger than the excited state nucleus. So what does it mean? The different uh, isotopes may have, uh, uh, may, may have difference in, in, in the fact that the excited nucleus and ground state nucleus are larger or smaller than the other one okay so it depends upon the nucleus so this is also a main factor which affects the uh, most part chemical shift okay so chemical shift uh, chemical shift in the case of most part spectroscopy and that depends upon um, the the radius of the excited and the ground state nuclei so there is an equation chemical shift is equal to a constant into a rho square excited minus rho square ground rho square ground into r excited minus r ground divided by r ground r ground okay Ground. So this is how the chemical shift is depending upon the uh, the the radius of excited and uh, ground nucleus. Here R excited is x, the radius of the excited nucleus. R ground is the radius of the ground nucleus. Okay, a rho square excited, rho square ground. This rho square represents the s electron density at the excited and the ground state nucleus. S electron density at the excited and ground state nucleus. Okay. And uh, for a particular nucleus, this term that is R excited, R excited minus R ground divided by R ground will be a constant for a particular nucleus. Okay, it will be a constant for a particular nucleus. So from the chemical shift, we will we can get an idea of the relative electron densities because then it depends on our rho square excited minus rho square ground, right? So, it gives a an idea of the relative electron densities. So, these are the two factors. We already discussed the two factors 
which are affecting the chemical shift of the MOSFAR spectroscopy. Okay, I hope you understood this video. If you have any doubt, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.